All right, now to the reason we're all here, uh, I'd like to welcome up to the podium to introduce you to the 138th inductee in the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame, Selection Committee member, Kyle Klingman. You can win a championship or you can win a championship with integrity. Our next inductee falls into the second category. Jason Christensen compiled coaching numbers that sound more like a video game than reality. 482 dual meet wins, 186 state qualifiers, 127 state place winners, 25 state champions, five dual state titles or traditional state titles at Southeast Pole, 22 top four finishes in the Iowa High School State Championships, four appearances in the top 20 national rankings, 20 conference championships, over 100 team individual titles. He coached 45 Fargo All-Americans, seven Fargo champions, and produced nine Division I All-Americans. One year he had 127 wrestlers out for the team, and his videographers filmed 2,600 matches per season. The reality is Christensen built a dynasty at Southeast Polk by doing things the right way. He did it by creating a championship culture where junior varsity wrestlers had as much value as a four-time state champion. Jason would help any person from any program at any time, even the ones who resented his success. He built a winning formula that seems simple in theory but difficult to execute. Surround yourself with great people and let those people do what they do best and then work like a dog to make it happen without cutting corners. The following insight from Iowa Hawkeye two-time All-American current Southeast Polk assistant Jessmyn Smith sums up Christensen best. Every kid in our program would do anything for Coach Christensen, varsity or junior varsity. The loyalty is astronomical, and so is the amount of time he worked. Out of respect, he had to work as hard as he would. We're complete equals. All he cares about is the kids. Iowa has a rest, wrestling legacy like no other. So Jason's role as our state chairman for Iowa USA Wrestling Board should make us feel good about the future of this state. And we should feel good about inducting him into the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame in Cresco, Iowa. Please welcome our next inductee into the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame, Jason Christensen. that uh, warm welcome and say all those nice things about me because uh, I'd rather not talk about myself tonight so I don't have to be. I appreciate that. 32 years ago when I started my first coaching job at Collins Maxwell Baxter I never ever in my wildest dreams would have believed you if you would have told me that I'd be standing here tonight. So I'd sincerely like to thank the selection committee for thinking of me for this wonderful recognition. As a native son of Iowa, this is certainly one of the most meaningful and personal honors I've ever received. I'm flattered to join Ken, Dan, Cliff, and all the other esteemed members of the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame. When I think back, I'm reminded of a quote from Greg Lonning, my coach my first two years at Central College. There are two roads in life the easy road and the hard road. The easy road leads to nowhere. The hard road leads to success, happiness, and contentment. Quietly and humbly take the hard road. I'm not sure I really had a choice. Now after all these years, I realize that was Coach's point. We wrestled in the lunchroom at Maxwell and rolled out the mats every day. We won nine duels in my first five seasons. My first year at Oskaloosa, we lost to Pella for the first time in school history. And if you realize the rivalry between the two communities, that wasn't a great start. Southeast Polk was a well-respected program, but the ice finish in a male sport was wrestling 
fourth place in 1971. The only state championship trophy was from girls basketball in 1977. Wrestling had a total of three individual state champions, two Smiths, and one Jones. These are just a few examples of the obstacles on my road. Once you win, everyone else forgets. But those obstacles are what keep the journey meaningful. When your career is based mostly on decisions of 15 to 18 year olds, you have to find a way to reframe success, especially when the scoreboard says you're a loser. To change results, I have to change the culture. Culture is an overused term, and it can be hard to grasp. Culture is simply what you value and what you believe. To instill values and beliefs, you have to change the way people think. And when you can change thinking in a positive way, success usually follows. Tonight, I'd like to share the credit of those who helped me establish my culture on each path of my coaching journey. These are the people who took the hard road with me. This is my roadmap to success. What did I value? First, participation and opportunity. Second, assigning, assigning and defining roles for success. And third, putting kids first, or best practice. Wrestling teaches characteristics like discipline, dedication, sacrifice, delayed gratification, can instill those values without participation. My priority was to provide every opportunity possible to help our athletes achieve their goals. This takes a tremendous amount of effort and commitment. At CMB, we went from 15 wrestlers my first year to nearly 40 the last. They even passed a bond issue and built an actual wrestling room, but I left before it was finished. Numbers grew at OSCE too, but nothing compares to the changes at Southeast Polk. Going from 32 athletes in year one to 117 15 years later. And we still practiced together in the same room at the same time. The message was simple. Everyone has the same opportunity. We took teams four or five different directions every weekend. Multiple teams gaining varsity experience. This kept our upperclassmen interested. At season's end, we routinely finished with roster sizes in the mid 70s to the upper 80s. And with a huge group of senior leaders, numbers are powerful. Assigning and defining roles for success in our program meant giving responsibility and autonomy to athletes and coaches alike. No single person is bigger than the program. State champion to the bottom of the depth chart and that included me. Humbly take the hard road. There is no better example of embracing your role than a phenomenon at Southeast Polk called Jeff Varsity. In 2007, Jeff Evans came to me with the idea of demoting himself to the junior varsity level. He wanted to ensure that we never had to rebuild the program, just reload. Junior varsity, or JV, went from being a derogatory term to Jeff's varsity, something celebrated. This changed the way our kids thought about developmental teams. Jeff's varsity focused on improvement. Seventh on the depth chart, state place winner. Two years on Jeff's varsity to state champion. Yes. Those are real stats. Our kids develop patience and belief in the program through Jeff's efforts. His goal, be the deepest team in the country. That changed thinking, even mine. For a wrestling coach, placing the state championship medal around an athlete's neck is special. For my second champ, I let Oskaloosa assistant coach, the late Phil James, do the honors. The look on Phil's face when I handed him the medal and said, this one's yours, was priceless. He'd never imagined he'd have that opportunity. If there were for sale signs in my yard after that loss to Pella, Phil would have been the one pulling them out, throwing them in his trunk, making sure I'd never see them. Give people ownership, give them credit, 
and they'll accompany you on the hard road. Kids first, best practices. Why do kids participate in sports? Number one reason is to have fun. So how do we make it enjoyable? Annual traditions like the Last Supper, Singlet Saturday, team haircuts, the reading of Twas the Night Before the Red Owens, road trips and travel, and the Gallon Challenge were some things that our teams looked forward to. Kids' commitment to the sport became socially motivated. Adding Justin Smith to our staff made an immediate impact on our wrestling results, but his best skill was helping kids enjoy the sport. His warm-ups and preparation helped take the edge off in stressful situations. He also wrote the NCAA manual. That's the Nine Circle Association of America rule book that Southeast Polk wrestlers played every day before practice and before every duel of the state duels since its inception in 2011. Think four square, square on the practice circles of a wrestling mat. That's nine circle. It gained cult-like status. Justin also spearheaded the first responders duel, which was a number one versus number two matchup that drew a little over 4,000 fans. And it came down to the final match and it was an incredible experience for our kids. My involvement in Iowa USA Wrestling provided me the opportunity to learn from great coaches. Mark Ryland and I were competing against each other during the winter, but the other nine months of the year, we were on the same team, Team Iowa. Mark passed away a little over a year ago, and I humbly stepped into his state chair position. Mark was loved by his athletes, and he loved them. He always put kids first. Iowa's outstanding results this past year were because of the policies and the best practices he put in place. <clears throat> I see a lot of Mark and his cousin, Steve Michelson, our membership director and treasurer, who's been a good friend and leader in, in our organization. Together, we will continue to strive to continue Mark's legacy. Dave Means was my right-hand man at CMB and one of the most committed coaches I've ever known. In those days at small schools, if you were a coach, you also had your CDL. Dave drove 92 miles between Maxwell, Huxley, and Baxter to ensure that those kids could get to practice. They loved Dave. He had a captive audience for nearly 40 minutes every day in the van. Over the course of time, he changed thinking. The van also grew to a bus. And we went from 9 and 37 in the first five years to 14 and 2 and 6. Excuse me. Get a little dry. Sorry. Much like Dave, Jeremy White is my sidekick at Oskaloosa. He is the hardest working coach I've known. He did absolutely everything the kids did at every single workout. Run, lift, drill, every rep, everything. He was the Energizer Bunny. I tried to persuade him to come to Polk with me, but Oski was on the verge, going third and first the next two consecutive state tournaments. Coach White put kids first. I'm thankful for all the assistant coaches that I've worked with over the years. But one of the things I'm most proud of at Southeast Polk is that we have three wrestling coaches that not only wrestled for me, but they also chose to become physical education teachers. I can't think of a bigger compliment. One was my first champion at Southeast Polk. Ironically, at that time, every champ's last name was still Smith or Jones. Upon my retirement, the entire staff stayed and they haven't skipped a beat. I'm proud of their continued success. Remember, when I arrived at Southeast Polk, there were zero state wrestling trophies in the trophy case. Today, there are 30. This past season, Southeast Polk had 13 qualifiers, nine state place winners, and were second in both tournaments after winning the traditional last year and placing third the year before. 
I was out running a few weeks ago and a truck passed me and turned around in the driveway up the road and started coming back toward me. The window rolls down and I hear, Coach, you're a long way from home. I'm trying to play space through the afternoon sun as we make some small talk. I remember who it is and I ask him about life and some of his classmates. He asks me if I've been back in the room since retirement and I tell him I haven't. And immediately he blurts out, they didn't have a very good year this year, huh? I'm told I have a look. And he must have gotten it. Because after I repeated this year's statistics, he said, well, that's just what I heard. He drove off. I had to chuckle. Expectations and thinking certainly changed in Southeast Polk County. That's not my hard road now. I'd like to thank my college coaches, Greg Lonning, Kevin Azinger, and Tim Hackle. Your lessons will stay with me for life. My dad for teaching me what a good teacher, father, husband, and coach should be. And mom for teaching me to focus on the present and what I can control. Not let the peaks and valleys be too high or too low. Those skills serve my teams well over the years. <clears throat> my quiet and humbleness comes from you. To my wife, Jeannie, and son, Gabe, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> um, thank you for sharing me with the sport of wrestling. The amount of support you've given me has been tremendous. You allowed me to chase my dreams and live my passion. To all the CMB, Southeast Polk, Iowa USA wrestling families, thank you for trusting me with your children. To each and every athlete, regardless of your role, I appreciate you allowing me to be part of your journey. Throughout my career, I was often asked how the team was going to be, or my outlook for the season. I often replied with an Amos Alonzo Stagg quote, I don't know, I'll tell you in about 20 years. Well, 20 years have come and gone. I often get notes in the mail, phone calls and messages from former wrestlers, letting me know how they are applying the lessons learned from wrestling in their communities, careers, family, and daily lives. And so I ask myself, how does the team look? Well, I think the team looks pretty good. And I'm blessed to have been given the opportunity to impact so many lives. Hopefully I've made a difference. That's really all I set out to do. Thank you.